their food. I forgot about Scruffy. He's a bit of an outsider. The other birds don't really like him to socialise with him because of the way he looks. Very unfair, isn't it, Scruffy? I know. Look, I've got a nice big container of seed here for you. Oh, are you going to come and pinch it as well, are you? No, that's not fair. I've given you yours already. This is Scruffy's. Are you, you going to put your claw on it? I can still take it away, you know. Even though you've got your foot on it, doesn't mean it's yours. Come on, give it back. Give it back. Let me take it. <laughs> Dug of all with the cockatoo. All right, no, come on, let me take it. That's not fair, it's Scruffy's. <laughs> oh, he's being naughty. You're being very cheeky. Yes, you are. <laughs> let me take it. Let me have it, please. <laughs> oh. Oh, come on, you've got your rose on over there. This is Scruffy's. Let me tip it into the bowl, please. Now, he's going to be naughty. Look at him. He's going to be cheeky. He's going to take it. No, you can't have it. I tipped it in really quick. All right, off you go, Scruffy. You've, oh, don't be mean to Scruffy. You've got yours on the other side. Cheeky birds, these, aren't they? You've got plenty, look. Those other two are over there eating. And now this was Scruffy's. Why don't you go over there and let him eat? Hey? Poor Scruffy. Poor Scruffs. Alright, well when this one moves over, Scruffy, you'll go and get them. Okay, now I've got to go and pour. I shoot the other cockatoo away so that Scruffs can eat. There you go, Scruffy. Is that yummy? Yes, it's good, isn't it? It's good. It's all right, you can eat. You hang on to it, hey, so it doesn't swing away. Oh, Izzy. Stop with the whining already. You can't have him. Shush. So there you go. Anyway, just wanted to show you that he was getting fed. All right, now I'm going to pour. G'day guys, welcome back. I'm painting at night today, so seems very glary to me. I've got the light over there shining in my eyes. Hopefully it's not too shadowy. Okay, um, doing some similar colours to a swipe I did recently. That's the swipe that I did. And I used this colour here called shrimp. And I used my lovely turquoise that I make called Peacock. And then I've also got this darker one in here, which you can see little bits of it. That's my navy. And obviously I swapped with black. But today I'm using all of those and I'm going to not use black. I'm going to go with white instead. So let me just move that out of the way. But I'm not doing a swipe. I'm going to do the flip cut paws in those colours. Just four colours. Uh, the last seven pours that I've done in that series, I had seven colours. So I had black and white and then five different colours. So just minimalising it all today, tonight, and going with just white and three colours. So pouring medium, same as before, 70 grams of, 70% of glue, 30% of water. And I just mix up 700 grams of glue and 300 grams of water and put it into my big bottle there, ready to go. Okay, so I'm just a bit worried that this one's a little on the thin side. I did add more paint to it. So what I've got here is I started with 100 grams of pouring medium, 100 grams of paint. But this one had an extra 20 grams of paint. This one's pretty much the same. The white and the navy, I did 120 grams of pouring medium and 100 grams of paint because I know those two are going to thicken up, so a bit less there. So for treadmill silicone, I'm going to go, because they're big cups, they're 200 grams, I'm going to go five drops in each. One, two, three, four, five. Five and five. When I did my seven colours, 
I didn't put any oil in the black and the white and I had five colours left and I did three drops in those. So three times five is 15. And in this pour, I've got three colours with five drops. Three times five is 15. So the same amount of oil for this size canvas, which is a 30 by 70 centimetre or 12 by 24 inch. So same size, same amount of silicone in total. All right, I, I did put a splash of water in my white just to be on the safe side because I don't want it splitting. Now I'm not sure how many layers I'm going to have. I'll do the layers a little bit thicker than I would normally do. I'll probably get three layers in, I would think. Let's just have a look and see. In goes the navy. I should bring these a little bit closer to me so I don't have to lean over as much. That would be better for my back, wouldn't it? Poor old back. Nurse's back. All that heavy lifting with patients. Moving beds around. It's quite heavy work, really. Oops, I put a lot of the shrimp in there. I haven't got as much left. Why don't I have very much left? I've got a heap of white left. Oh, I did make up extra white, didn't I? I was just saying I did 120 to 100. That's okay, I'll just finish off with white. Alright, that's the first layer done. Maybe I will only get two layers. I was kind of thinking I might get three layers in this one. But it doesn't look to be the case. Leave a tiny bit of white in there. But this is going to be pretty. I've actually got my um, blown up glove ready in case I decide to do some balloon dips. I really enjoy doing the balloon dips on that other flip and tilt. <laughs> or flip cup and then tilt that I did. So... I thought I'll get it ready in case I do decide to just do that because I haven't done one for a while. I've been doing those that seven series. And as I, said, as I said in my other video, I do want to do a nice big painting for myself. So I might even do, if this works well with these colours, I may even do a really big one with these colours and maybe add in some warm red in, as well as this shrimp. Not sure yet. I'll see how this turns out. And if it's, I am expecting it to be quite a pale pour because it's got the pale turquoise, this shrimp's pale, it's got a lot of white in it. So I think it might be quite pale. But uh, we'll just see. I think the uh, warm red might be quite nice in it. I have to do a little practice pour with the the warm red because I don't want to waste all a lot of paint I'll just do a little practice pour on my card that I use for my practice pours just to see how the color combinations work together and if it works then I can do a big one it's very handy having the cards if you want to just practice your colors okay well that was two two layers never mind I did do bigger layers than I would normally do. So I have got my usual white and then this one is called shrimp. So if, um, I can open it. Oh, they get stuck. I only just had it open. It's stuck already. Okay, so that's the shrimp and this is peacock. That Nice aqua colour that I use. And then, of course, my favourite, Deep Space, my navy blue. And that's pretty much empty. I have to make some more of that up. That's the one I make myself. It's got cool blue in it, a touch of black, even smaller touch of green just to counteract the, the purple tones in it. 
Um, if you want to see how I make my navy, you can go to my, my video. I've done two videos now, one on making all the sort of blues and uh, purples, and then another one I did making pinks and my shrimpy colour and um, plum, I think it was. Anyway, a few different colours. Right, those have released already, so let's do this. trying really hard not to get my blobby bits. There we go, over on the corner. Hope my um, peachy colour doesn't get lost too much with all this turquoise. I should try and flip more into the middle, shouldn't I? And then maybe I won't have such a big area. That didn't work. I don't know why, it's so different to that one. I don't know what I did differently. I'll have to watch the video back and see what I did. That's why I like doing these videos. That's why I started, actually, uh, so that I could look back and see what I did right or what I did wrong. All right, pop a little bit of this on this corner. I'm doing it like that because I want the stripes all to go in the same direction. Not too fast, let the paint fall out. So that you've got a nice little pattern there. Those are pretty much empty. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to do the same as I did with my recent videos. I'm not going to torch yet, even though it's really really tempting but I won't. I'm losing some paint off the side there let me just grab that. Okay turn it around actually no let's just try and get some of that covered first. These it's not too bad I can I can live with those. Now let's go and concentrate on these corner catcher ready because I don't want to lose too much paint over the edge just yet so let's go to the bottom over to the side come back and bring that around there because we don't want to drip over the your beautiful background don't want drips in it do we so always take your corner catcher or your hand or your cup or whatever over the, don't go over the top of your paw. Okay. I really don't like it when I get this effect here. I might just have to balloon dip it. Hey! <laughs> I didn't thin this paint out too much. It seems awfully thin. I'm so worried about my white splitting that I tend to overcompensate and make and try and make my paints, you know, a little bit thinner. But I mean, it's been working so far. But I still do feel as if I'm making them a little bit too thin. I'm gonna have to push the boundaries and see how thick I can make it without it splitting. But it's such a waste, you know, when you go to all the trouble of mixing up all this paint and, and then you, um, you have a split paint and then you have to scrape it. But I will have to experiment and, and see how far I can push those boundaries, how thick I can make it without it splitting. Come on, cells, up you come. Say hi to the world. Are you going to be pretty cells? Just give that a minute. Go 
quite a bit close there. Look at my colony. The cells are quite small at this stage. So that in itself tells me that my mix is not too thin. I kind of looked at it and thought, mm, that's a good size mound on a mound. So it's deceiving when you start moving all the paint and it flows really easily. But it's what your cells look like at this stage that's going to determine uh, how big they're going to get and whether they're going to stretch out of shape or not. This is a pretty guy. He's got a peachy coloured ring around the navy blue. Same here. Hello little gecko. Did you hear my gecko? Alright, let's go again. Over here. I need a bit more happening just there. Oh, I got too close. I kind of want more than usual. Only because I want to do some I'm thinking I want to do some balloon dipping. I've just got my um, my glove blown up. It's the same glove that I used the other day. It's shrunk a little bit. That's okay. I like it to be nice and soft. I don't like them to be too rigid, the balloons. That's why I go with the glove instead of a balloon. It's really quite soft. As opposed to these, these plastic ones, these are a little bit firmer. Um, the white gloves. This is a food handling sort of a glove. The other one is too, but it's white. It just seems to be um, thinner, softer. Okay. I really like this. This has got a lot more interest. The darker cells popping up. Here, it's a bit plain, but let's see what happens when they start stretching out. I think I'm going to have to get rid of some of that because it's really very busy over there. Uh, do I want any more? I don't think so. I think that's enough. All right, let me grab my little push pins underneath and let's go for it. Walk the paint back and forth. I need to get to these big triangle areas here. I also want to get some of that off and go over the corner there. And bring the weight of the paint back to the middle so that I can just change direction a little bit without it all running over the edge there because I still need to get to this other corner. I don't want it all running over the edge just yet. Okay, that's over and come back. Oh, I've lost my straight lines. How did that happen? How did that happen? Little cells, aren't they cute? <laughs> They're much smaller today. Now, how can I straighten things up a bit? I can't. I'd like to bring everything back over here because this seems very stretched out, but the only way I'm gonna do that is to bring the weight of the paint here and go that way, but then this is all going to Get ruined. Let me see if I can just bring it over a touch. I did it. <laughs> oh, I did it and that stretched them out a bit as well. So what I did was I moved everything forward and then that way and that kind of straightened these up. Shrunk this area a bit. So now I've got sort of equal sizes. I want to see if I can open this up a bit here though. looks like a beach to me. It's very beachy and sandy and ocean looking. I'm going to put my hand under here and see if I can get that, that's those cells to open up a bit. And the wrong parts are moving, but this is moving instead of this. See how my line curved? So what I need to do is to move this, I have to bring the weight of the paint back to here to move it that way, but I don't know if I want to move it all that way. No, I don't think I do. Now, do 
I do some balloon dips. What do you think? I really like the minimalistic look of it. Um, let me cover my corners while I have a little ponder. Wish you guys could talk to me, tell me if you think I should do some balloon dips or whether I should just leave it because, hey, it is gorgeous, isn't it? It's really, really pretty. Kind of be ashamed to dip it. Because what if my mix, my paint mix on the surface is a bit thick and my dips don't look very nice and then kind of ruin it and then I'm going to be sad, aren't I? But I really wanted to do another dip. Oh, that wasn't exactly a good match. I need some more of this pale turquoise. That's better. The other one had too much white in it. I do try to match my colours, my corners, as much as possible. It's only a tiny little area, but hey, you might as well get it looking as good as it can get. Just walked in front of the light, I'm sorry. Got a light right there in the corner of the room. Nice bright LED spotlight that I got for Christmas. Things you get for Christmas when you're an acrylic pourer. You wouldn't normally be excited to get a spotlight, would you? No. All right. Um, I don't know. I can't decide. How small and cute are these cells, though? My mix must have been thicker than I was expecting. Um, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do a few. I'm going to do one, one here because I don't like that. Um, and then I'll kind of do one in the middle there and I might do one there and then one up here because there's a couple of little blobby bits, little wormy creature things happening. So um, I need to get some paper towel to wipe off my balloon. So I'll get that ready. Let's break off a piece. Fold over so I can clean it off onto there. Okay, cross your fingers for me. I hope I'm making the right decision here. Actually, I could do a dip straight into the middle of that too, hey, because it's a bit it's a bit yucky. Okay, here we go. It doesn't work. I can scrape it, it's just paint. No worries. <laughs> no worries at all. All right. Now I'm going to push down and then I'm going to go around in a circle and then back up. Around we go and back up. And you can see how thick my paint is there. It kind of went and dripped. Um, maybe, oh, actually it's little cells are appearing in there, so that little drip will just end up looking like a cell. I think it'll be alright. Okay, how's it looking? Have I ruined it? Don't tell me. Um, you know, I don't know if I want to involve that there. We'll, we'll see. Um, where will I go next? I'll pick the bits that I really don't dislike the most. So this bit here. It's got this elongated thing here with the two little round bits on the bottom. Not a good look. I'm not even gonna go there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and incorporate that but this blank bit as well. So in the middle there is what I'm gonna try for. I can hopefully see what I'm doing. So round and up. I could, I could feel it going and that one I pulled up a lot slower so it's kind of got more defined petals than this one I don't know whether that makes a difference or not but I did pull it up slower and I lifted my balloon I didn't go straight up I just sort of went 
I could feel the suction, I could feel the resistance, and then I pulled up a bit slower after that. So, well, it is gone. All right, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm getting some pretty white colours through there. These cells here, see how these were cells and they've actually turned into petals by um, the balloon pulling them down. So that's what that's from. Looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Okay, um, we'll go down here because there's a bit of a blobby bit there, so I'll just incorporate those. Down, round, and slowly. And I'll put that over there because I don't want to drip it back over the top of my canvas. How's that looking? I'm going to wipe my balloon. I don't want to put dirty paint or muddy paint back onto my surface. Give it a bit of a wipe. So this one, it's got more of the um, aqua coming through, isn't it? And more of the peach too. That looks really pretty. So I think if I just do one more about here, maybe I should offset it. Hmm might just sort of offset it a little bit and incorporate these here because I don't want it straight in the line with that one just a bit off center I'll see how that one goes hey down all the way around and up okay <laughs> uh, I do think this works better when you don't have so much paint on the surface but hey um, the paint will it'll dry it'll dry flat I'm just thinking I might go over this one again because or maybe I shouldn't oh it's hard to know isn't it whether you make things worse or make things better See the cells on this, these were cells and they've been incorporated into the flower now so they've got better petals. I guess this one didn't have any cells around there, that's why it doesn't have any petals here. That was a very plain blank area, it only had these cells here. So that's probably why I don't have any petals, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, four, four balloon dips is going to be all I'm going to do. I love it. I even love, love, love it. <laughs> Someone messaged me on YouTube saying that they loved, loved, loved it. And I thought, oh, do I really say that so much? It's funny what people pick up on, isn't it? <laughs> oh, dear. All right. I love, love, love it. And I've got my corners covered. Let me just wipe the underside one more time. My white has not split. Um, let's see, what can I say? Negatives about it? Hmm. I guess the aqua is quite dominant. And maybe I'd like a little bit more of the peachy colour next time if I do it again. Which I'm sure I will. I, I really, really like these colours. Um, so, I don't know. Like, you say, oh, I don't want, you know, I'm going to cut back on the aqua. And then next time it's too peach, you know. And you think, oh, it's too peach now and I've lost my aqua, my sort of bluish, oceanish look. It really does remind me of a beach, though. Um the, the sand and then the pale seas and then the darker seas and anyway let's get these gloves off and uh, I'll take you in for a, a close-up I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing a big pour like this with using this technique uh, because I think it's it's such a an easy easy technique to get right on a bigger surface now I've just got the light behind me so I'm kind of blocking it but there she is and let's take you down
so vibrant. Look at those colours. You probably couldn't see them from up there. It's just gorgeous. I actually haven't loved, loved, loved a painting like this for a long time. The colours are just amazing. And look at those cells. Got rings, peach rings around aqua, and there's navy in there as well. And then there's the peach rings around the navy there. Peach around the aqua there. Peach around navy. And then we've got our little balloon dip in the middle. Yeah, I really like it. And then here, that peach has done well to surround those dark cells. And I did put the peach next to the navy, didn't I? I went white, navy, peach, and aqua. So the peach has surrounded the navy cells really beautifully so happy with it and this little balloon dip here where the aquas come through <gasps> how gorgeous gorgeous I love it okay enough chattering I am definitely going to do a bigger one and I think I'll do these colors these colors really would match my house because I've got a pale timber um, it kind of looks like that peachy colour, maybe a little bit more brown in it, but and pale. Oh, all my furniture's really pale timber. My dining room table and you know the legs of the sofas and all that kind of thing, really pale. Um, and I've got grey walls. My trim is all white, and then I've got splashes of navy and an aqua in my house. So I think that on a grey wall with the light timber floors would look amazing. I'm not getting the best colour from that way. The colours are much more um, I guess correct looking at this way probably because it's shining into the light. Okay, I'm going to leave it there and um, yeah, watch this space. Definitely going to do this again. Love, love, love it. See you for the next one. Bye for now.